Welcome back to another episode where we learn the Moog Model 15 iPad app. In this episode, let's check out the manual. Okay, it's divided into a whole bunch of parts. Let's check out the first part, Introduction History. The Model 15 is a digital recreation of the Moog Model 15 Analog Modular Synthesizer. As an iOS app, the Model 15 enhances the original functionality with powerful new features, including programmability, four-voice polyphony, ping-pong delay module, arpeggiator module, <laughs> original one didn't have an arpeggiator, real-time overdubbing recorder, Ableton Link compatibility, uploading and sharing of data, extensive MIDI support. In addition to the traditional Moog um, 952 keyboard and on-screen recreation of the original Moog Model 1150 ribbon controller, the Model 15 also includes a new iteration of the Animoog, Animoog um, keyboard for extended performance expression possibilities. The Model 15 is MIDI compatible with, and each knob and switch can be assigned a MIDI CC number to allow control for an external, allow for external control of any MIDI device. The MIDI bridge allows MIDI values to be sent to and from other apps, while Audio Bridge allows the Model 15 to operate as an inter-app audio instrument or effects processor capable of adding dynamic filtering to a track in another application, for example. Modular Synthesis Overview Long before there were keyboard workstations, samplers, digital audio, and groove boxes, the modular synthesizer was the instrument that put electronic audio on the creation on the map. As the name suggests, these instruments were a collection of well-chosen well modules. Each task in the creation of electronic music, generating sound, sculpting the tone, controlling the volume, etc., required a specific dedicated module. Groups of modules, modules, oscillators, filters, envelope generators, and so on, could be installed into a single cabinet sharing a stable power supply to create a synthesizer system such as the original Moog Model 15. With nearly no existing or pre-wired physical connection between each module, external patch cables were used to allow audio, control, and trigger signals to move freely from module to module. This ability to have one module deliver a control voltage CV signal to another module is the foundation of the voltage-controlled synthesizer, including voltage-controlled oscillators, VCOs, and voltage-controlled filters, VCFs, and voltage-controlled amplifiers, VCAs only pre-wired exception where the ed where the edge connectors used to connect the original 921A oscillator driver to the two 921B oscillators. In recent years, the emergence of the Eurorack format and the popularity of compact semi-modular hardware instruments, including the Moog Mother 32, have ushered in a renaissance of open-ended design in of the modular synthesizer. A brief history of the Moog Model 15. In 1973, Moog released a number of modular synthesizer systems designed for maximum versatility and equipped with the latest 921 series oscillators, which were hailed for their stability when compared to the original 901 series. While their larger, while the larger System 35 and System 55 came housed in a finished walnut cabinet, the much more portable Model 15 featured a latch cover for the control panel and came clad in black vinyl wrap, wrap typical of guitar amps and speaker cabinets. The innovative Model 15 along with matching 952 keyboard allowed for two voice operation. The Model 15 went out of production in the early 80s but was reintroduced introduced in a highly limited production of 150 pieces by Moog in 2015. The following year 2016 saw the introduction of this Model 15 app. Nice. Installation notes. I think we already have it installed, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see the manual, and therefore don't read to re need to read the installation notes. Alright, navigating the Model 15 app. So we have a front panel, pinch and zoom, scroll bar, modular zoom, turning a knob, flipping a switch, pushing a button, all right, let's read. Patch cables serve three functions. Audio jack, carrying audio signals from module to module. Control jack, carrying control signals, also known as control voltages, from module to module. Trigger jack, 
carrying gate trigger signals from module to module. In addition, patch cables can be color coded to help keep track of your patching. If you're new to modular synthesis, don't worry, the module 15 makes it easy to use patch cables correctly. Making a connection. Begin by touching a jack and da -da -da. I'm gonna skip the stuff that's obvious because it's far too boring to read everything. Yep. Okay, we got that. Using the top tab bars. Tempo. The current tempo is displayed in beats per minute. By tapping, you can set the tempo to a finer resolution. Tapping the BPM number will open up a larger BPM and tempo display. You can repeatedly tap to set it through tempo tap. Undoing and redoing. Okay. Choosing a controller. Keyboard. Got a pitch wheel. Under the controller output section, there are three pitch outputs that allow you to send information voltage from the pitch wheel to any control voltage input jack you choose. The pitch wheel information voltage is automatically added to the pitch of the Model 15's 921A oscillator driver when the controls to oscillators is switched on. Under controller output section, there are three modulation outputs that allow you to send information voltage from the mod wheel to any control voltage input jack you choose. There's a controller output section, huh? Velocity. This, the location is where you initially touch a key from the front edge to the back edge will determine the velocity that's not played. Under the controller output section, there are three velocity outputs that allow you to send velocity output signal to any control voltage input jack you choose. After that, sliding your finger further back on a key will determine the amount of pressure applied to a note. The controller output section, there are three aftertouch outputs. Activating the vertical slides as modulation feature causes this motion to instead be sent to the mod modulation controller outputs. iOS users with 3D touch can use 3D touch as aftertouch. All right, volume, glide. Glide provides continuous change in pitch between notes. The glide knob controls the timing with the glide effect. When on, the hold switch causes notes to continuously continue to sound even after you remove your finger from the keyboard. This is useful for drones after working and working with the arpeggiator. Okay. Before we read about the Animoog, let's stop and look and see where, where the stuff is that they're talking about. If we can find it. Can I actually go and find it clear? I don't know if there's a template that's clear. Here we go. So there's the controller outputs that we were talking about. There's the modulation, the velocity, and after touch outputs. This is controls to oscillator, controls to envelopes. So I think that's what I was talking about where it where you can actually control where things go. You know what to play around with it more. Right, let's keep reading. All right, Anim Animog keyboard serves as a series of expressive, expressive playing features to the Model 15, first introduced in the Animog app, including custom scales, pitch correction for bending notes, and polyphonic legato. Not all keys can be displayed at the same time, so directly above the keyboard is a scroll bar with a slider for selecting the key's playable area. Touch and drag the slider. Yep. Pitch wheel. 
under the controller output section, there are three pitch outputs, yeah. And then that automatically applies to the oscillator when the controls to oscillator switched on. Just as we saw before. The location of where you touch the key is velocity, and then after touch is sliding further back on the key will increase the pressure. And then if we glide and hold, same kind of stuff. Arpeggiator automatically plays the notes held on the keyboard in a rhythmic pattern. These patterns can be saved and loaded independently from a preset. Touch the plus minus box to open or close additional ARP parameters. Master controls for the ARP include on off, latch, retrigger button, and master gate, gate length knob. On off turns on and off, yes, latch. Provides separate function for the hold switch for the controller. When the hold of the switch is engaged, each new note will continually will be continually added to the pattern. By contrast, the latch switch will also allow you to add new notes to the pattern, but will reset the notes in the pattern once you've removed all fingers from the controller and and it be touched again. This makes it simple to arpeggiate changing chords. Retrigger button. Normally the arpeggiator will continue to cycle through the entire length of the ARP pattern. When retrigger's on, the ARP pattern will reset to the first step you play a new note. Okay. Gate length. Determines the length of the articulation, note length of each step. Kind of standard stuff. Save and load. Tapping lock will retain as you move from preset to preset. Tapping the pattern length, produce that octave range, size step. Direction, up, down, down, up, up, down, two, down, and so on. I'll we'll have to play with the arpeggiator to get a sense of how it all works. Okay, the ribbon. This is a recreation of the vintage Moog Model 1150 ribbon controller. Unlike traditional keyboards with distinct pitches, a ribbon is akin to a fretless bass, providing a playing surface that can swoop and slide between pitches. This must be patched in in order to work. Yeah, that's why some patches actually don't work with this thing. To use a ribbon as a basic controller as a preset, simply create a patch at the main ribbon output of the control in the controller output section and connect it to a control input of any module. So at the patch, at the main ribbon output, at the controller output section. Let's look at that real quick. Yeah, there's the ribbon main dude right here. Right there is ribbon main and there's ribbon aux. Let's see what that means. Nice, we kind of kept your place in the manual. All right, let's see. On off, playing the ribbon, touch a trigger strip in the middle of the controller to generate sound. While holding the trigger strip, take another finger and slide it left or right to change the pitch of the ribbon controller. When multiple fingers are held on the ribbon, the finger furthest from the right takes priority. Switch one, two. Switch position one is the wide setting prov providing a pitch range of the lower 10 octaves. Pitch two is a narrow setting which provide 20% of the range when using setting one. Aux control. This slider provides a second continuous variable control voltage signal that's made available for the patching. Note when main ribbon or aux control is released, each note, each can contain its, retain its very value or reset to zero. This behavior is set under configurations. All right. Almost done with the manual, 50% left. Yeah, right. Presets. Selecting a preset. Kind of obvious. Save new. Delete. Moving. All right, all good. Know everything about presets. Settings. Background audio. Recorder beep. Signal processing. Eco mode. Reduces the CPU load. Ableton link. Let 
Left handed moves the navigation bar to the other side. Knobs. When tooltip is activated, operating a knob switches or switch causes the parameter name and the value displayed momentarily in the bank. Linear, circular. These are all like how the knobs behave. Controllers. Ribbon returns to zero, aux returns to zero, vertical slide modulation, 3D aftertouch, some MIDI goo, MIDI CC mappings, share, chair iCloud, audio transfer goo, scales. Can be set to any 22 musical scales and played in any musical key. Individual keys can be muted or removed from any scale. Let's look at how that works. So if we go to settings, scales, so we're in chromatic right now. Let's see, major blues. That's kind of neat. Major pentameter. Yeah, it's just major pentameter is pretty much the normal one. And root note, you can set it to whatever root note you want. That's nice. You can lock it. I don't know what lock means. Let's see what lock means. When the scale lock function allows you to retain retain the currently selected lock when changing presets. Oh, okay. So it's like preset changing locking goo. All right. Um, modules. I think there's probably a ton of docs and modules, aren't there? Yeah. It's just... Actually, there's not much docs and modules, which is kind of surprising. Let's read that last. Um, sharing data. Sharing allows you to share with other module 15 users, musicians, and friends. You get to share your current data. It shares like a file. Presets column, you can share the current preset or the current bank as well as their current arpeggio pattern. That's kind of neat. I wonder if there's websites yet that have like a bunch of data. You can just, patches you can go download. I haven't really searched on it yet. Importing shared data. Keyboard commands. So you can actually hook up a Bluetooth keyboard. That's what I'm doing, which is kind of nice. And there's keyboard commands to zoom in, zoom out, change presets, hide controllers, undo and redo, changing to all the different uh, modules laid out in a four by four. You, know, you can warp to any of the modules, and then there's MIDI notes laid out in piano style using the keyboard. You can change octaves by pressing... Each press of the Z key will lower the pitch, and X will lower the pitch by one octave, raise the pitch. So Z and X will raise and lower the pitch. It's kind of cool. Um, velocity. So C will lower the velocity, and V will raise the velocity. All right. Better really to use a MIDI keyboard if you're if you're gonna actually play this for real, but this is kind of a quick and dirty way to do it. And support, I don't think yeah, it says nothing. All right, okay, we'll read the uh, modules modules section of the manual next episode. See you next time.